these words are my own. Through some chords together, the combination D E F is who I am, is what I do, and I was gonna lay it down for you. Okay. Let's um, apply this snow shader and have a look at some of the options. I'm going to create new primitive, one meter size, um, and I'm going to bring it up so I can see it. Now, if you're not sure how to apply a shader or how you're supposed to get the, get them working, um, please check out um, the previous video on shader basics. I'm going to apply the shader, making sure the plane and the plane's surface is selected. And there it is. And I can see it's applied because on the shader now at the top here it says shader snow noise. And like all shader mixers, uh, materials, you don't see it until you render. Let's just have a little look. And there is our snow shader. It's completely transparent except for where you've got these white blobs. So anything we put behind this shader will still be seen. And just to prove that, if I just quickly change the background to um, you know, a green and render again, you can see the background through the snow. So if you had a figure standing behind the snow, he would appear to be covered in snow, you know, in that snowstorm. All right. Now we can modify this pattern in quite a few different ways. Um, if you look here into the surface tab, we've got a few options. We've got ambient. This affects whether the snow glows. Like, will you see it if there's no light on it? Now that's quite useful um, if, you, if you've lit your figures a certain way and you don't want to put any lights on the snow, but you still want it to show up. Set that to 100% and you will still see it. But if we turn it to zero, you will only see it where there is light on it. So maybe a night scene, maybe a spotlight, um, you would want that set lower. We can change the color of the snow. So let's change it to pink, and I'll render that in a minute to show you what it looks like. We can change the amount of snow, and I've given you a little guideline here, 0.25 to one, so let's increase it to 0.7. We can change the brightness, so let's make it a bit brighter. And we can change the size, so let's double it to two. Now the main advantage of using a shader rather than um, an object or a texture is this customizability. You can make this snow look like anything you want. Now that is a cool effect. I mean that could be, if we applied this to a figure, we could make a figure out of these strange blobs, I could make slime, um, I could make dirt. Let's uh, bring up the snow to quite big to about nine um, let's make it um, brown this might not show up too well on the black background so let's change the background color um, to white let's make it a little bit less of it but make it a little bit brighter and let's render that I've got perhaps an effect that I could apply to a floor or a figure or a wall um, I can just modify the settings I've got here um, to make it look um, how I want. Now I've got my plane back to its default settings here and I just want to render it again to show you that when we actually increase the size of the plane the shader texture or the shader pattern remains the same size. Let me show you. So if I grab um, the plane I'm going to blur up to about double the size and render again. The pattern doesn't get stretched at all. It doesn't smear all over the uh, the plane. It just becomes a bigger version with more spots than the version we did before, which means that if no matter how big your scene, this snow shader can can cover the whole thing. In fact, it could even cover the whole sky. To show you that, if we reduce the amount of snow that we actually have in the scene, I'm going to take it back down to the minimum, which is 0.25, and I'm going to blow up um, the uh, the plane to cover you know, more the whole screen that I've got here, and I'm going to move it back away from me, and then even though um, I, I need it bigger now, it doesn't matter because the pattern will compensate. I'm going to bring in a little spaceship. And then I'm going to render. We get the final frontier. 
which is fantastic. And again, of course, because this is a shader, it's customizable. You can have more stars, less stars, pink stars, purple stars, um, and any kind of variation that you want. So let's try uh, this snow shader um, in action. Uh, we've got two soldiers here. Um, I've put them in front of the uh, cyclorama background with a snow backdrop. And they're having a little argument about uh, which way they're going to go next. But I would like them to actually be standing in a snowstorm. I want the snow to be coming down. So I'm going to need a plane and I'm going to need to apply the snow shader to it. Um, I've already got mine in place. There it is. There's my plane. I've got the snow shader applied. Um, default settings, of course. And as always, the snow, the, the shader won't appear until we actually render it. But when we do, that plane will turn into a, um, a big picture of snow. Um, now, I'm going to try something a little bit more advanced here by not just using one plane covered with snow, but two. Now, the reason for this is this first plane over here, the, the one nearest the camera, is going to have bigger bits of snow because it's nearer the camera. This plane here is going to have small speckly snow, and this gives us a greater variety of the snow that's going to appear in the picture. Now, I've arranged these planes, as you can see, but if I look back along the camera, to completely cover the camera's view. And in fact, if I look through the camera, we can't see anything at all unless I make these invisible. Um, there's my shot. Now, that's of course because the camera uh, needs to only see snow, because if, if, the, if the, uh, the snow stops, it won't look real. So if we render that, the effect we get is a little bit like this. We've got those two planes with the snow shader, some big bits of snow, and some little bits of snow. Now I realise it's not the greatest picture in the world, my artwork isn't fantastic, but I think the snow shader does a pretty decent job. For this last section of the video, I'm going to go into the shader mixer itself. Now this gives us a lot more control over what we do with the bricks, but obviously it's a bit more complicated, so uh, if you want to stop watching at this point, feel free. I've selected this sports bra here, I've selected the surface, and now I'm going into the shader mixer, and I'm going to click File, From Scene. It's going to say what I want to take, and I'm going to say the material, OK. And now when I pull this out, this is now the material which is currently on that sports bra. And specifically, what we're interested in here is where it says Diffuse Color, and the bricks attached to it. And we've got an image brick here, and if I pull that out, that is the image which we are currently seeing, this 08 bra. Now what I want to do is use the snow brick to mix with the existing texture because before it replaced everything that was there but I want to mix them together and the way I'm going to do that is I've made a set of user bricks um, brand new bricks made up of um, existing functions and we're going to use Addy Snow which is the snow um, the snow shader that we've been using before and we're going to mix Addy Snow together with this existing image brick. And to do that, we're gonna need a, a maths mix brick, which we can find in functions, maths, mix. And we're mixing colors. So where it says type float, we need to change it to type color. And we just plug the various bits in. So we go from the image, the existing image, we go into base, because that's our base image. We're going to come out of the mix block and go into diffuse because now you can see the existing wires we've now replaced and we've now got this brick instead. And then we're going to use the snow. This one where it says opacity to alpha, we're going to go to the alpha. This one where it says color to layer, we're going to go into the layer. And now we choose our settings like we did before with the snow. I'm going to have very small snow here. I'm going to have snow color black to give me a black pattern on the white uh, texture that's there already and I'm going to have quite a lot of snow so I'm going to pull it up to about 0.7 and then before I render it I hit apply and as this renders 
you should be able to see that it, the snow pattern has overlaid the existing texture. We can still see the other texture, it's still there, and we can still see the, the, the bump and the specular patterns that were there before, but we've added the snow to it to give us a brand new design on this sports top. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, any suggestions for um, improvements or other things you'd like to see, um, let me know. Thanks a lot. This is the Adipose. Goodbye.